Um, so I'll go ahead and start talking because I know we only have a limited amount of time. And, um, and that'll come and go, I guess. <laughs> so I'll tell you a little bit about our organization in a second. I work for an organization called um, the Belize Foundation for Research and Environmental Education. Um, it's a mouthful. Also, my title is a mouthful, Director of Organizational Development. That essentially means I do a lot of stuff on any given day, and I can't tell you what that is from day to day, but it's awesome, and I love it. And um, a huge part of what I do is promote education and discovery in the rainforest. And so I've titled my talk today, Learning Takes Courage, because some people, when you say, study abroad in the rainforest, they think, oh my god, that's awesome, and other people think, no. Never are you crazy. And um, so I want to talk about what you do in your classrooms every day that requires your students to take courage. And then I want you to think about how that courage can apply to an experience that seems so much bigger in the rainforest. <clears throat> so whether in the classroom or our daily lives, we are faced with challenges and opportunities to learn and grow, to succeed or fail, to be stagnant, or to pursue experiences that broaden our perspective. As educators, you guide your students through these opportunities, and they are rewarded for their courage with structured feedback and the next opportunity. Consider some circumstances in which your students are faced with a new challenge, and then place their response on a scale that ranges anywhere from confident to indifferent to nervous, oh my god, I don't want to do that, to frightened, to deer in the headlights, terrified. And I'm sure you can see your students in all of those situations right now. I can see myself in those situations right now. I'm going to give you some examples, things that sometimes create fear. <clears throat> so sorry. That's okay. Speaking of things that create fear, I'm so sorry. That's okay. Is this better? Oh, yeah. Okay. So, some examples of things that challenge your students or create fear in the classroom. How about the first day of preschool or kindergarten? Fear, real fear. The first day of school for any age group, also real fear. Maybe for different reasons, but there's still terror often involved. Giving a presentation in front of a class. Doing anything in front of a class. Raising a hand to ask or answer a question takes courage. So even just thinking about raising a hand to ask or answer a question takes courage. Playing an instrument or a sport for the first time, or when your parents are watching, or when your friends are watching. Taking a test. What if I fail? What if I don't get into college? What if I don't pass the first grade? These things are stressful, and they create fear in people reading out loud in front of others. How about us as teachers or educators? We, we face challenges and fear every single day. You can think about your first day of teaching school. Your first time doing anything, really, could be fearful. Observation days, when you're standing in front of your classroom and other people are grading your performance. Taking a class on a field trip to the museum down the road could, be, could create fear and anxiety. Parent-teacher conferences, when there's information you don't necessarily want to share. So the list of learning and teaching experience, experiences in life that require courage is endless. So I'd like to ask, within all of that, what is it that we as learners are afraid of? Failure. Embarrassment. When you think about the rainforest or other things, maybe injury could be a fear that comes up. But ultimately, what we're afraid of is what we don't know. So you have to learn to break that, to break out of that. And so how do, you take, how do we guide our students through conquering fear? How do you do that in your classroom every day? I'm sure a lot of it is just, just show up. Encourage them to take that first step. Encourage them to raise their hand if they're the kid in, in the back who never raises their hand. Encourage them to open their mouth. Ask them to simply try. And so these first steps lead to the next until what we're doing that we're so fearful of becomes less scary, a little more normal. 
and can even reach the point of being exhilarating and fun and, oh my God, I want to do that again. So with that message in mind, learning takes courage. I want to tell you about Be Free because it's a field station in the middle of a jungle and we bring students there. And some of the teachers in this room have visited that place for their own learning, to expand their own horizons, and it's awesome. So, let's see. Do I want to change slides? I think I do, but it doesn't want me to. Do I point somewhere else? Ah, okay. So I've been working for Be Free for about three years. The organization, though, was established about 20 years ago. It was created by a small group of really excited biologists who were interested in conservation and they wanted to go into a pristine rainforest and make a difference in the world. So they moved onto this facility. Well, there was no facility. They moved into the forest after getting permission from the Belize government and they started to eke out an existence in a jungle. And while they're doing this, they keep thinking, we need a field station. We need to have educational programs. We need research here. We need things to happen so that we can save this land. Because letting the land just be isn't a solution. Because there's a lot of valuable stuff in that land. And so if, if it just was left up to its own, it would be a banana farm. Or it would be, um, it would be logged for its valuable woods. And so this group of people moved onto the this property. They lived in tents for about two years. This was their kitchen, a thatch in the middle of the forest. That takes courage. Um, so there are so many stories I can tell you about Be Free and what it's like to eke out an existence in a rainforest environment in southern Belize, away from anything and everything that's normal for you. Um, <clears throat> but what I'm going to tell you about instead today is about the study abroad field courses and how they fit into our mission and how you might be able to participate. So Be Free is a US-based nonprofit. I work primarily in Gainesville. I do the, uh, is that my time? <laughs> ah, here? OK, got it. I am clearly not moving along fast enough. OK, our mission is to conserve one of the last um, unspoiled rainforests on the planet. It's the largest intact area north of the Amazon that's still rainforest. What we do to make that happen, I'm just going to have to run through these, is we do research, we invite researchers down, and we do environmental education programs. We do those within Belize, within communities, and we do that by inviting students from abroad to come down and to learn about science, to learn about the rainforest, why it's important, and how they can participate. We have so many awesome pro programs going on. Relating to research, it's a really exciting place for biologists and for anyone interested in the outdoors. Um, really quickly, I'm going to show you that this is Belize. Um, and it has a population of about 330,000 people. It's English speaking. Um, <clears throat> it's. Oh, this is different. Oh, okay. Um, Be Free is located in this southern part of Belize. This is. It's surrounded by protected areas. Um, it's about a million and a half acres of unspoiled rainforest, and Be Free is situated right in the corner of it all. So we have an amazing location. Here we are again. Um, the only non-protected area is this small community called Trio, and we work with them on community um, education projects. So still not doing this right. These are some of the facilities that we have available. Um, <clears throat> backwards. This is what Be Free now looks like from the air. So we have multiple buildings. There's a, oh, if only I knew how to do this. Oh, I work in conservation, not technology. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you saw it. There's a lot of stuff going on there, including a bunkhouse, kitchen, all sorts of good stuff. Um, we're back here. We're here. We're surrounded by protected areas. We're looking at the aerial view. It's awesome. Okay, we're moving along. We have a lot of stuff. Okay, <laughs> environmental education programs. <laughs> so we host, we've hosted over 1,900 students 
in the rainforest since beginning um, 20 years ago. What these students do is anything from biology to fine arts. I mean, they go into the rainforest and it is the site for their study experience. Um, we host students from Belize. We sponsor a lot of students who are able to go. We try to help fundraising for teachers who need support. Um, field courses last one to two weeks. They generally entail about 12 to 18 students. Um, hey, time. Um, <clears throat> so, I'm just gonna take a breath. So our goal is to increase, increase awareness of the world, to build capacity within Belize, to build capacity with, throughout the world, to encourage discovery, both self and of the world. These study abroad courses help to make that happen. We do them in small groups. We support them through their learning opportunities. Um, <clears throat> these are a number of the places we've worked with. Okay. I've just run through like the majority of my talk and I'm not done. But I want to show you some students. These are students who are in a situation that is absolutely fear it invoking and they're completely comfortable. But not because they were before they walked up 140 feet to the top of that tower. It's because they were supported by their teachers and by the other people who told them that they could do it. And so I wanted to show you a few pictures of people studying abroad, taking risks, and feeling great about it because they're, in, they're nurtured. And so the key is for learning anything is you nurture your students, you help them feel strong and courageous, and they are strong and courageous. So these are students in the rainforest, hiking through things, walking around snakes, seeing monkeys in the trees, and they are laughing and they love it. <clears throat> these are teachers. They did a Maya homestay and some of them were fearful absolutely fearful. They didn't want to stay. They didn't, they wanted to stay, but they were afraid. And then they loved it. And they are, they are in love with their teachers and their families and the other people who participated in those experiences. And they'll do it again. And I bet they'll bring their students. Um, we do night hikes. We teach people to safely interact with animals for the purposes of science, collecting data, not harming the animals, not harming themselves. Um, James Gray. Oh, that's really cute. Um, learning what these animals do what, and, and, and how we can safely participate in their lives. Bird handling, fearful. What if I squash and kill this bird? But it's a wonderful experience and we collect the scientific data throughout all of these experiences. Oh, there's so much more. <laughs> okay, so I think I'm supposed to be done. But what I, what I want to say is that study abroad is valuable no matter where you do it. And if you are brave, your students will be brave. And if you go, your students will go. To the rainforest, to China, to the ocean, wherever you go, they will follow because they trust you. And your job takes courage. Okay.